In 2022, as music producers and creatives, we have so many tools that have made it easier and faster to create amazing art. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make amazing visuals for whatever your needs may be. Once these AI tools came out, I realized how easy it was to manipulate them and create really visually stunning images. It only takes a few minutes, so stick around and learn how to do this with me. If you're not aware what AI art is, let me give you the basic rundown. Google and OpenAI have created a deep learning and neural network engine that uses the images from the internet to create images based on prompts you give it. Simply writing a prompt describing colors, details, landscape, people, places, things, whatever you want, the AI will return an image to you. Now with our goal of wanting to animate a video, we're going to want some clearly defined levels of depth whether that's something in the foreground, some depth between the midground and background, or some objects that we want to move. You can also animate so many different environmental features, such as fire, hair, light, fog, whatever you are trying to desire, there's a way to do it. Why I love this method is because instead of spending the hours in After Effects trying to come up and create really unique animated visuals, I can just generate an image and manipulate it in After Effects. It's super simple and quick, so let me just get into it and show you. All right, getting into this, I have kind of an idea of what I want and I'm thinking something with like a cliff edge and you're looking down and you see like the ocean or like a river or something like that in the distance. And then you see the camera just kind of pan and you get that kind of parallax. So let's, let's just type in um, cliff edge with a distant river. We'll do mountains in the background and we'll do digital art and we'll just type in 8k all right so i think this is actually a really great start i really like this this first one the second one and this third one i do also really like in this first one how the sun is kind of like coming through the middle and just like shining through everything so let's let's just try out a few of these and let's figure out what kind of the best one is um, I'm gonna get some variations of this first one because I just want to see what's what is gonna change um, And let's just let's try to get some variations of the, of the fourth one and, and see if we can get anything with that All right, I think we have a really great image and we're gonna use the second one And it was from our original first one. We got some variations of it um, I think we're gonna use the second one just because there's a lot of stuff in the foreground that we can cut out and really add some parallax in there so I, I'm going to favor this one and we're going to, we're going to try it out and we're going to see how it goes. All right. So what you're going to do is once you have it, you're going to go to my collection. Um, you're going to click on the image. Oh, that's not it. Uh, it's this one, I believe. And we're going to just download it. Click on download and then it's going to pop up right down here. It's going to download. And then we're going to use an AI upscaler to upscale the images because most of these images render out at 1024 by 1024 pixels or 512 by 512 if you're using stable diffusion with a less powerful computer or you just want to do it quicker. So we're going to use one of those tools to blow it up to 4K, get it really high resolution. So then that way when we do all of our cutting and stuff like that and we can scale it up in After Effects, it won't lose as much quality. And then I'm going to use a program called the Gigapixel AI. Um, I really like this upscaling program. Uh, you can try it for free, uh, but I will also link a few free ones in the description if you want to use those. So we're just going to drag it in here um, and it already selected four times. Um, I'm going to want it to be 4K. I want it as high resolution as I possibly can have it. I don't want to go 6K or six times. It's a little bit too much. Um, so it's kind of loading here. I already know it's going to be more than fine. So I'm just going to hit save image. And once we hit save image, then I already have my path laid out. And then I'm just going to give it a name like Lush Landscape. And then you'll just hit the save button and then it'll start rendering. It takes about 30 seconds, less than that. It doesn't take too long. And then we're going to pull it over into Photoshop and then we're going to start cutting out the layers. All right, jumping into Photoshop, uh, I've already recorded this video like four times and each time something wasn't recording. So <laughs> sorry, the layers are already kind of cut out. Um, but I will walk through it again for you guys. Um, so on our on our main layer, um, we're just going to take the pen tool, lasso tool. You can use the quick selection tool too. Um, this is really great, quickly selecting what you want. Um, I'm just going to use the pen tool though. Um, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but it has to be pretty close. You don't want to be going too far off the lines. Um, and we're going to just select. 
this foreground layer. Right. And then we close the loop and then we're going to hit make selection hit OK on that. And then once make sure that we have the actual image selected and then we'll hit M on our keyboard to get our marquee tool and we'll hit layer via copy. And now we have this foreground layer that we've cut out. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing. You can do repeat the process, um, get these mountains in the background. You can capture some of the foreground. We're going to layer that foreground on top. So in the end, it's not going to really matter. Um, so then we have our foreground and then we'll have our background layer. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint out this watermark. So I'm going to hit alt my keyboard to eye drop this and we're just going to paint that out. All right, now we're good. Um, so then I'm just going to capture this element. Um, I hit control shift S on my keyboard and we're going to save it as a PNG. And as you see, I already have some of these labeled. Um, so I would name this first one lush landscape with foreground. Um, and then the mid ground, we'll just do the same thing. Control shift S PNG lush landscape, and we'll just type it mid ground. All right. Hit okay on that. And we already have the original image for the one, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're going to hop into after effects and we're going to get started animating. All right. Once we have after effects open, we're going to just take our files and we are going to load them into after effects. Boom. And we're just going to hit this. And then I like naming mine main comp. Um, make sure your resolution is set correctly for what you want. Um, I'm going to be doing a vertical video for Spotify Canvas. Um, so we're going to do just a 1080 width and 1920 height. Hit OK. And then we're going to just take all these layers, drag them into After Effects. Boom. And we'll select all of them, hit S on our keyboard, scale it. And we'll just go to 30% just so we can see what we're working with. All right, that looks good. Um, next, we're going to make sure our layers are layered correctly. So you want the original image to be at the bottom, your foreground layer to be on top, and your midground to be in the middle. Um, so then we're going to take all these, hit S on our keyboard again. Oh, and we're going to scale it up. 50, it's a little bit too much. Let's do 48. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna just right click. We're gonna hit new camera. Um, you can do, just do like a, a 50, mil, 50 millimeter lens. And then you can just hit okay on that. Doesn't really matter at this point. And then when you hit toggle switches slash modes, you'll just select the little 3D box and you'll give it to all the layers. And then if we select all the layers and then we just hit P on our keyboard, we'll get our position. And now these are X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, and so what we're going to want to do is take our background layer and just adjust it and then move it backwards. And then we'll just scale it up a bit. And we'll just go position and we'll scale it backwards a little bit more. And we'll just scale it up again. All right. And now for our midground, we're going to do kind of the same thing, but not as extreme. We don't want it to go farther than our background. We want to keep it somewhere in the middle, um, a little bit closer to our foreground. And then we'll play with the Y. We'll move it down a little bit. We'll scale it up. And just move it down a little bit more. Boom. All right, perfect. And now we can go into our camera and we can hit P for position. And as you can see, as you, as you move it, now you're starting to get some of that, some of that parallaxing effect. Um, and you can use different tools for it. Um, there's point of interest. That one's kind of cool. It, it does that kind of, um, these are more like pans and tilts than anything. Uh, we want physical positions. So if you click right up here, um, there's a little, this little, this little pan tool, um, I believe, oh, why is that not working? Oh, sorry. Use this tool, this pan under cursor tool, and this will let you actually physically move the entire camera in 3D space on the X and Y axis instead of the Z axis. And then I'm just gonna hit control Z on this and I'm gonna just move 
to the right side of the frame and I'm going to keyframe all of these, all of these keyframes. And then we're just gonna, this is gonna be a Spotify canvas. So we're gonna go to just like eight seconds hit NR, key, NR keyboard to change our comp area, trim comp to work, work area. And then now that they're already keyframe, we can just move the camera how we want to the end of our position. Boom. And see, it only used these two keyframes. And then I'm gonna go back in the beginning and I wanna give it a little bit of rotation on, on the Y axis, not too much. Um, and so that way it just, it does a little bit nice. Um, and then I'm just gonna go the opposite way with the, with the Y trans transformation. So it kind of has this, it, it, it's locking on to, to the main focal point of our scene which is kind of like this light shining down through this valley. Um, so now when we look at it, now we're gonna get this kind of, that kind of look. Um, now it's not as extreme as I want, so I'm gonna do this a little bit more. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, we're getting some of this kind of clipping from our foreground. So I'm gonna just scale this up just a little bit. Um, and then I'm just gonna move this down. Boom. Perfect. So now you kind of, you kind of get the feeling and sense of the depth in the scene instead of it just being an image that you're just kind of moving across the screen. All right. I think that looks pretty great. You can also add some other elements like some fog and smokes. So I'm also gonna show you how to do that. All right, now I have my sp smoke asset and you can see it kind of goes across the screen like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it in here and I want it behind this foreground but I want it in front of this mid ground. So it seems like there's kind of like a mist rolling in. Um, and we're gonna make this a 3D layer as well. Uh, we're gonna scale it up. I'm gonna just position it a little bit farther down. Um, and as you can see, it's in front of this foreground layer because it is a 3D layer. So I'm gonna just move it back a little bit. I hit toggle switches in mode so I can pop up uh, the mode layer. And we're gonna hit just lighten to get rid of that, that black background. And now you should you should see some of, the, some of this smoke start to trail in. I might have to cut it down a little bit. Let's see. There it is. All right. Uh, I'm gonna hit all left bracket. So that way I can cut that there and then hit the left bracket, bring that to the front. Should we get some more smoke? Um, now the, the lines look a little bit weird. So we're gonna, we're gonna try some of the other modes. I think add looks a million times better than lighten. Sometimes just switching that can make the world of a difference. And now we got the smoke moving across our screen. So it, it, it brings the image more to life. Um, and then we can just literally hit composition, add to media encoder and render it out in our preferred codec. And there you go. You have a great animated video. Um, there's a million ways to do this and you can mess around doing a million different things with it. 